Hello and welcome back to Mastering AWS featuring SQS. Today we are going to enter in some basic commands in the command line. Now as I've mentioned a few different times in this course, we are going to use AWS Cloud9 for both our command line interface as well as the IDE portion of this course. And if you have not already watched or viewed the command line tutorial that was in the earlier part of this course, I urge you to pause the video now and go take a look at that course. Because the first thing that you will need to do is you'll need to create an environment. Um, to do that, you just click Cloud9, click Create an Environment. We will call this SQS. Click Next Step. I'm going to leave everything default. Then Create Environment. Now the earlier tutorial on Cloud9 goes into a little bit more depth. This one I just want to get the environment up and running so that we can start entering commands. Depending on how much time we have, we are going to enter in probably two or three different commands. And then we will continue on depending again how much time we have in the next tutorial. So I'm just going to pause the video here while this environment is created. Once the environment is up and running, we'll start entering those commands. All right, so we are back. Uh, the environment has been created. What we are going to do now is we are just going to start entering in different commands. The first command that we want to enter in is AWS SQS list dash queues. And if we had any queues already created, it would pop up there as you will see in just a moment. The next thing I want to do is I want to create a queue and to create a queue, we're going to go AWS SQS create dash queue. Then we need to go dash dash queue name. And we are going to call this new queue. All right, and then we know that it was created successfully because we have the queue URL. So if we go and we list the queue again, AWS SQS list queues. That's not working. AWS SQS list dash. There we go. So there is a little bit of a delay between when the queue was created and when we can view the queue via list queues, the list queues command. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create probably six queues in total. So I'm going to just go up and hit enter in one. So I have a new queue one and then a new queue two. Then I want to type in AWS SQS create dash Q dash dash Q name and we're going to call this one old Q. That one was created successfully as well. So we'll give this old Q one and then old Q two. And then what we want to do is we want to probably wait 30 seconds and then we want to do a list queues again. AWS SQS list dash queues. All right, as you can see, we have our six queues. Now the reason why I wanted to enter in these queues, the old and the new, is because the next thing we're going to do is, is we are going to list the queues by prefix. And to do that, we are going to type in, we, we want to get all of the queues that have new in front of them, and we want to omit the ones that say old. So we're going to type in AWS SQS list queues. dash dash q dash name dash 
prefix. And then we're going to enter in new and see what we get. And see, we get the first three. We get the three new, but not the three old. So the next thing we want to do is we want to send a message. So let's send a message using new Q1. And to do that, we type in AWS SQS send dash message dash dash Q dash U R L. And I'm just going to copy the HTTPS here and I'm going to paste that in down here. Make an error, that's fine. Then we need to type in dash dash message dash body. And we will say hot cross buns. Hot cross buns was a song that we sang when we were little kids or played when we were little kids. So we're going to hit enter and then we receive a message ID as well as an MD5 of message body. So that means it was sent successfully. Let's send another message. This time we are going to send it to the new queue. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to type in AWS. Actually, let's clear the screen first. I'm going to, I'm going to copy this here and clear the screen so that it shows up at the top. We're going to type in AWS SQS send message dash dash Q URL and paste that in dash dash message dash body uh, we'll say today whoops today's date is question mark and we'll hit enter and again you can see we received a message ID which usually means it was sent correctly so what we're going to do now is we're going to verify that these messages were sent and received in a few different ways. The first way we'll do that is we will go up to the AWS message console, the, excuse me, the AWS management console, and we are going to click on SQS. Let's change the region to Northern Virginia. Let's change region to Ohio. Hmm. What region is it in? <laughs> I'm going to assume that it's in Actually, we can check the region by Southeast one. All right, so Southeast one was that Southeast AP Southeast one. Um, so No, Singapore. 
All right, so we found our we we found our cues. Um, I did not configure the I did not configure the region, and so we found ourselves in southeast one. The way I was able to figure it out two ways: trial and error. And the second was I was able to take a look at the region. Every region has the, a code similar to this that's associated with it. So I went to, usually I use US East 1, which is Northern Virginia. For some reason, we are in the Southeast 1, which turns out is Singapore. But we found our queues and as you can see I have six listed I have new queue new queue one and new queue two then I have the old queues and what we did previously before I went for a hunt for my queues is I sent two messages so we can click on the checkbox here and then click view messages start polling and as you can see, we have the message today. Today's date is with a question mark. So if we close that, we can close that. Let's go back over to our Cloud9 environment. And what we could do is we could receive messages. And to do that, we simply just type in AWS. SQS. receive message then we need the queue URL so we're just going to I'm just going to copy this paste it right in here and then hit enter and as you can see we need well, we have the body we will need that recipient handle going forward that recipient handle is important when we need to delete a message and I'll show you how to do that coming up but we were able to successfully receive that message so that's a good thing for in the next tutorial we are going to pick up where we left off uh, we are going to send some more messages. We are going to create a queue with attributes. We're going to list those attributes, tag a queue, and delete some messages, as well as delete a queue. So thanks for watching, and we will see you soon.